We've been cold crashing now for a number of days. Now it's time to get it into the keg. So I'm gonna do what's called a closed transfer today. And the way this works is we're gonna use CO2 to pressurize the fermenter. It's gonna come out of the line and go into the keg, never touching oxygen along the way. So let me just show you all the detailed parts here. First is I have a small CO2 bottle, which I find really convenient. I keep that separate from my kegerator bottle, which is over here. And I use this just for closed transfers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first sanitize everything. So you can see down here in the, this little Tupperware container I like to use, I've got some parts I'm going to sanitize. And uh, the way this is going to work, on, at least on the SS Brewtech, is we have this, um, this is a 1.5 inch um, pressure relief valve. And basically if it just, if the pressure gets to be too high, it's just going to push up on this spring let the air out. That way you don't have an exploding fermenter. So I guess the first tip here is to make sure that your fermenter is rated to be pressurized. So we're going to hook that guy up to here after we take off our airlock. We're going to take this end and we're going to hook it up to our keg in. We're going to purge it to get any oxygen out of there. And then what we'll do is we'll take this other line that's down here and we will Connect that right here, and then we'll screw it on to the end of this hose here. And then on the other end of the hose, we'll put one of your standard connectors, which will end up going to the beer inline over here. All right, so I'm gonna pressurize all this. I'm gonna transfer beer in here, but before I do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is sanitize everything. So I'm gonna mix up a batch of star sand. We'll get the keg all sanitized and then I'll come back for keg assembly. We don't have a uh, professional, you know, stainless steel sink in our brewery. We're unfortunately, we've got to use the bathtub here. But anyway, I filled the keg up with star sand. Uh, I like to use the, the uh, dip tube here as a stir stick just to make sure everything's stirred well. Uh, I've also got all the components down here in my Tupperware and there's my star sand. So I'll let this soak for just a few minutes and then we'll be ready. Back out in the garage brewery, we've got everything ready to go. I'm going to start assembling this keg. So let me get out all my O-rings and everything. I like to use a little bit of keg lube here. Helps it seal, helps protect the O-rings. So now I've got everything out that's ready to get the keg lubed and assembly. And then I've even got my 7 8 wrench in here and the hose and everything and the, uh, you know, the pressure valve in here. Can't be too cautious. All right, I got the, uh, the post back on here, and you can see inside the keg, maybe, maybe not, but there's lots of good foam in there. So we've already lubed this up. We're going to go ahead and install this next. Now we're going to purge the keg. So you can see that I've got the, this one closed off. This is the one going to my pressure valve, and the other one is going up to my keg. So I'll turn this on. We're going to crank this up to 30. This CO2 bottle is a bit smaller, so it takes a little bit longer to fill up. And we'll do that about five times. This is also a good opportunity to check for any leaks. All right, so now we'll go ahead and shut that off. By the way, if you, if you don't turn on the right valve, it'll start bubbling out here. And that's not what we want. I meant to hit this valve. Okay, and now what we can do is we can turn this pressure down and I can go ahead and back it off down here. Because for the next step, we're gonna want this like at two PSI. All right, next. We need to open this valve, and I'm going to do that last, but essentially what will happen is if we don't open this valve, there's CO2 in here under pressure, and um, as we try to push out through the line that I'm going to connect in just a minute, uh, it, it won't be able to overcome the pressure, and it'll just sit there locked. So we need to open this to, to let some of the air out as the liquid comes in. 
Um, we also need to disconnect the CO2 line because we don't want any trouble with you know, CO2 going back in or anything like that at this point. So I'll go ahead and disconnect that. This valve has been sitting like this for quite some time. And if you think about it, the beer is going to be passing through here. So this is just another opportunity to pick up something. So we're going to go ahead and sanitize in here as well. Let that soak for a bit. So I've got that connected now. All sanitized on the inside. Next thing I did was I got my hose and although it was soaking in the sanitizer, I really like to be sure that it got sanitizer down inside of it. So I went ahead and sprayed some down into the hose and I'm just letting it drain out now. Two wrenches you should have in your brewery here. The 7 8 for the keg post. The 9 16 are great for these, these hose lines. I've got the hose all tightened up. On the other end, I've hooked up my quick disconnect for beer. And you'll notice that this is going to the outline of the beer. I've also disconnected the CO2 at this point. We don't want to have uh, any risk of pushing air back in and going back into the fermenter. It's happened to me before. We're done with the controller at this point. I'll go ahead and turn this off and get it out of the way. Next, we'll get rid of this uh, airlock and we're going to hook up our pressure valve that's down here soaking in sanitizer. The airlock is now off and in its place we have this uh, pressure valve. What I'll do now is I will open this up and pressurize the fermenter. So right now we have hardly any pressure here. So we're going to take it up to about 2 to 3 PSI. All right, you can hear it flowing in there. And if I were to lift this up a little bit, you can hear the air coming out. That's kind of the safety aspect of it. So now that our keg is, sorry, now that our fermenter is pressurized, our keg is pressurized too, by the way. And that's a reminder for me to go ahead and open up this relief valve. And we're going to turn it to keep it open this whole time. All right, so now that's turned, that's completely open. We'll start the flow of beer. And I'll do this slowly. And there we go. Now we see the flow of some nice, clear beer coming in here. I don't know if you hear that, but this valve is actually blown just a little bit. It means I've got my pressure up just a little bit too high. There we go. So I've backed it down just a little bit. Now you can see it's sitting at the recommended level. Um, you can hear it going into the keg. Now in the summertime, it's kind of neat that um, because it's so hot outside and the inside of the beer is so cold, you can actually watch the line as it rises and you can see, you can trace it all the way up. One thing you don't want to do is overfill these kegs. And I'll show you a little trick that you can use for that. This is an inexpensive shipping scale that you can get off of Amazon. Now I made a mistake here and hopefully I can save someone else some pain, but I got a 35 pound scale. And I came to learn, I thought that would cover all my needs, you know, for weighing grains out and things like that. But I came to find that a full keg weighs somewhere, I think my keg with all, you know, filled to the brim is like 40 some pounds. So this thing will air out. But let me put it on here to show you, we can at least fill it like three quarters of the way full and you could get the idea that you could uh, measure, you know, put liquid into your keg, say up to here. Uh, and then measure it and you know exactly when to stop filling it. Probably more important when you're doing 10 gallon batches or you know if you're doing basically more than five gallons. I've got the keg up on a scale now and we're able to monitor it as it gets filled up. It's got about 15 pounds in it right now. So oh you can actually see the line. Can you see this right here? Even though it's uh, not summertime, we can clearly see where the level of the, the beer is right now. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Well, you can hear that it's done. Basically what's happened is all the beer's flown out of here, and at this point it's just pumping CO2 in there. So go ahead and shut this off. Now I've lifted the keg into the kegerator. I've hooked up the line here. And what I'll do is I will set this to 30 
and we'll purge it again. And then after that, uh, we're gonna let it sit for two days at 30. So first, purge. And you can see my CO2 is getting low. It'll be time for a refill soon. And I'm getting little whiffs of the beer as this comes out. It smells great. Alright. So now we'll turn this up to 30. And you'll hear it moan a little bit. Let it sit like that for a couple days. Take it down to serving pressure, it'll be ready to drink. Now one important thing I want you to notice here is that the beer line is not hooked up at this point. It's actually sitting here on my shelf. I find these shelves are really handy for just um, you know holding on to the lines that aren't in use. The reason that is is because this is under 30 psi of pressure and I don't know if my beer lines are really uh, you know capable of holding that much beer and also we just don't want any accidents happening like somebody you know thinks it's ready to drink and it just explodes out of there so best to keep it disconnected until it's at serving pressure one other thing I'd like to share here is that I've got my beer line disconnected but it's sitting here full of sanitizer so this is my run back to the taps here and I did a video last week of cleaning these all out but I like to leave sanitizer in the lines until I'm ready to drink well, that's about it for tonight. We'll check back when it's ready to drink. Can't wait. Now, wait a minute. Did you think you were done? Nope. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of kegging a beer is that now you have to clean up. This is kind of an interesting looking uh, mess in here. You can see that we, we did pull down almost all the beer in here. And there's some nice hop gunk. This is probably from when I was dry hopping. And um, you can see that the ring actually got it pretty high this time. And this is why we use a blow off because uh, you never know. So next time I'm gonna disconnect this, I'll take it inside and I'm gonna soak it with some PBW. All right, I spared you. I've cleaned everything up. You can see that the fermenter's all cleaned out, nice and shiny, dry, a little bit of PBW, just a little bit of elbow grease. I've also broken down everything, so here's all the parts, got to let them dry, rinsed out, soaked in PBW, ready to go for next time. Not long now, we'll be drinking.